sing a new song to the Lord, for he has worked wonders. In the sight of the nations, he has shown his deliverance. Alleluia. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. May the grace, mercy, and peace of our risen Lord be with all of you. And with your spirit. Good morning and welcome as we, through the goodness of television, celebrate this fifth Sunday of this wonderful Easter season. Let us take a moment to prepare ourselves to celebrate this sacred liturgy. Mindful of our sins, let's open our hearts to the voice of God's mercy. Lord Jesus, you are the word made flesh and splendor of the Father. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ Jesus, in your rising, you remade our fallen human nature. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, in your love, we have power to love as you did. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. And may Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us from our sins, and bring us to life everlasting. Amen. Glory to God in the highest. And, and on, on earth, earth, peace to people, people of good will. We, we praise you. We bless you. We adore you. We glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, heavenly King, O God, almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty, ever-living God, constantly accomplish the Paschal mystery within us, that those you were pleased to make new in holy baptism may, under your protective care, bear much fruit and come to the joys of life eternal. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. After Paul and Barnabas had proclaimed the good news to that city and made a considerable number of disciples, they returned to Lystra and to Iconium and to Antioch. They strengthened the spirit of the disciples and exhorted them to persevere in the faith, saying, it is necessary for us to undergo many hardships to enter the kingdom of God. They appointed elders for them in each church and with prayer and fasting, commended them to the Lord in whom they had put their faith. Then they traveled through Pisidia and reached Pamphylia after proclaiming the word at Perga, they went down to Italia. And from there they sailed to Antioch, where they had been commended to the grace of God for the work they had now accomplished. And when they arrived, they called the church together and reported what God had done with them and how he had opened the door of faith to the Gentiles. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. I will praise your name forever, my King and my God. I, I will praise, praise your, your name forever, forever my, my King and, and my God. God. The Lord is gracious and merciful, slow to anger and of great kindness. The Lord is good to all and compassionate to all his works. I will, I will praise, praise your name forever, forever my, my King and, and my God. God. Let all your works give you thanks, O Lord, and let your faithful ones bless you. Let them discourse of the glory of your kingdom and speak of your might. I, I will praise, praise your name forever, forever my, my King and, and my God. God. Let them make known your might to the children of Adam and the glorious splendor of your kingdom. Your kingdom is a kingdom for all ages, and your dominion endures through all generations. I will, I will praise, praise your, your name forever, forever my, my King and, and my God. God. A reading from the book of Revelation. Then I, John, saw a new heaven and a new earth. 
the former heaven and the former earth had passed away, and the sea was no more. I also saw the holy city, a new Jerusalem, coming down out of heaven from God, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. I saw, I heard, a loud voice from the throne saying, Behold, God's dwelling is with the human race. He will dwell with them, and they will be his people, and God himself will always be with them as their God. He will wipe every tear from their eyes, and there shall be no more death or mourning, wailing or pain, for the old order has passed away. The one who sat on the throne said, Behold, I make all things new. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia. Alleluia, alleluia. I give you a new commandment, says the Lord. Love one another as I have loved you. Alleluia, alleluia. 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 The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said, My sheep hear my voice. I know them, and they follow me. And in the goodness of that grace, we know that the Lord, as those last words were shared last Sunday, and the goodness of all of that the Lord teaches us. And so when Judas had left them at the Last Supper, Jesus said, now is the Son of Man glorified, and God is glorified in him. If God is glorified in him, God will also glorify him in himself, and God will glorify him at once. My children, I will be with you only a little while longer. I give you a new commandment. Love one another. As I have loved you, so you also should love one another. This is how all will know that you are my disciples if you have love for one another. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. So good again to celebrate this Holy Eucharist as we continue in this wonderful Easter season. Again, a rather short gospel like last Sunday's Gospel of the Good Shepherd. Short, but yet one that is full of meaning for us. And an interesting focal point of that gospel is that it begins when Judas had left them. We know he had left them at table to go and to plot to turn Jesus over to be arrested to the authorities. We can understand that Jesus knew he had only about 24 hours before the horror of his crucifixion. And you think maybe he would be upset or angry or even depressed knowing that. But Jesus said, now is the Son of Man glorified. Important to know that glory in sacred scripture describes the revelation of God's saving presence. And we well know that in Jesus Christ, the very Son of God, that that very glory would be present, that saving power in his whole life. All of his teaching, all of his miracles, the way that he addressed and treated other people. And at that last supper then, to give the total gift of himself for us, then lead to the resurrection. And so he is not thinking about it that last supper and Judas left about the horror that he was facing. He thought about all of us all through these generations of he being able to continue the power and the goodness of his presence. And so it was at that last supper, we remember well, that he instituted the gift of the Holy Eucharist, the ultimate mystery of faith, which is the cornerstone of our worship. And it is the gift through which we totally experience the complete communion with God and with each other as the church. And Interesting as he instituted that Holy Eucharist, that he really gave his charge to, for, to those disciples to continue his whole mission, his whole presence that most vividly would happen down through the ages, through the church, through all of us. 
And it's interesting when he did that <clears throat> in that gospel this morning that he didn't lay out all kinds of, of rules and governance and disciplines for the church. He gave a simple command, love one another as I have loved you. Love one another as I have loved you. And so the glue of the church, of this community of faith, would be this remarkable love grounded in Jesus Christ. And that's exactly what defines us as the church. And knowing well, Jesus did, as all of us do, that's not an easy task. And has the church always, has all of us perfectly loved like Jesus down through the ages? Of course not. But a wonderful gift is that our Lord, even in our failings, individually or as a church, is about forgiveness, not punishment. And so we remember that in the midst of this institution of the Holy Eucharist at that Last Supper, he had just knelt down and washed the feet of his disciples. Another huge gesture of what he means by love one another as I have loved you. And so we can imagine it was an embarrassing kind of intimacy because it was a slave who would wash the guests at a table with their feet. But here the master, Jesus Christ, was doing just that. And knowing that it was probably difficult for those disciples to receive that gift, that humble act, but yet they couldn't miss the point of what he was teaching them, not just by his words, but by his action. And so it is that call for every single one of us in all of our relationships, starting with when we look in the mirror, our relationship with ourselves, to be able to love as Jesus loved us. All the things that he teaches us, all the ways that we connect with that divine gift, that divine virtue of love, of compassion, of care, of forgiveness, of service, of support, all those kind of realities. And the kind of love that Jesus teaches us is all about self-sacrifice, self-giving for other people, and how enriching, how you and I can enrich each other, the church, our parishes, our communities, our caregivers, whoever it is, how we can enrich by our care and by our love in all the many, many ways. So it's often said the best way for any of us to preach and to proclaim what we believe is to live it. Isn't that true? Each and every day. And in that goodness, we have a special challenge in this month of May, which is designated as Mental Health Awareness Month, that we're invited to just tune in, in our own lives, in our relationships, in our parishes, in our church, that special need of how do we grow an understanding, a compassionate understanding with for people who have are challenged by any kind of mental illness, any kind of difficulty in their lives, and the challenge of families and caregivers how we continue to grow, how you and I can love and care about those in greatest difficulty, greatest need, as Jesus does and as Jesus has modeled for us. And so may the Lord continue to bless us in this month of May, in this month of goodness, of greater and greater awareness and greater care on many, many different levels for all people. All are welcome. And every single person is so important and how we treat them and all the goodness that the Lord not only calls us to, but demands that we teach and we treat each other. Jesus said, love one another as I have loved you. I believe in one God, the, the Father, Father Almighty, Almighty, maker of, of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, consubstantial with the Father, through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. And by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. 
He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Trusting in our all-loving God, we now offer our prayers of petition. For our church, scattered <clears throat> over the face of the earth, striving to give witness to the coming of the kingdom, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the human race, constantly searching for harmony amidst war, racism, and terrorism, especially between Russia and Ukraine, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for all young people called to live life to the fullest. May they see in Mary's life the way to listen, the depth of discernment, the courage that faith generates, and dedication to service. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That as we strive to love one another as Jesus loves us, we may have a special care and love for those who are struggling with difficulties and disabilities of life. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That the family and friends of Patricia Seaman and all who have completed their earthly journeys may now celebrate everlasting life in Jesus Christ. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That God will answer the prayers of our hearts we now offer in silence. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Almighty God, you love us abundantly and teach us that we should love in the same way. May you strengthen us to bring your presence to all. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you. Fruit of the earth and work of human hands, it will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Lord, wash away my iniquities and cleanse me of my sins. Pray, sisters and brothers, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God our Almighty Father. May the Lord accept this sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. O God, who by the wonderful exchange effected in this sacrifice have made us partakers of the one supreme Godhead, grant, we pray, that as we have come to know your truth, we may make it ours by a worthy way of life. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, at all times to acclaim you, O Lord, but in this time, above all, to laud you yet more gloriously when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. He never ceases to offer himself for us, but defends us and never pleads our cause before you. He is the sacrificial victim who dies no more, the lamb once slain who lives forever. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exults in your praise. And even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. Holy, 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 holy Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed, Blessed is he who comes, comes in the name, name of the Lord. Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. You are holy indeed, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. 
Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your spirits upon them like the dew fall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread, and giving thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. This is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. A mystery of faith. We proclaim, we proclaim your, your death, death, O Lord, Lord and, profess and profess your resurrection until you come, come again. again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly, we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Donald, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have our mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At our Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our, our Father, Father, who art in heaven, hallowed, hallowed be thy name. Thy, thy kingdom, kingdom come, thy, thy will be done, done on earth, earth as it is in heaven. heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. May the peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Please share in wor his word of peace with those who may be near to you. <clears throat> Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. <coughs> Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, Lord, I am, I am not, not worthy that you should, should enter, enter under my roof, but, but only say, say the, the word, word, and my soul shall be healed. I am the true vine, and you are the branches, says the Lord. Whoever remains in me, and I in him, bears fruit in plenty. Alleluia. The body of Christ. Amen. Let 
let us pray. <clears throat> Graciously be present to your people, we pray, O Lord, and lead those you have imbued with heavenly mysteries to pass from former ways to newness of life. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit come upon you and remain with you forever. Amen. As our Mass has ended, let us go to bring the Lord's love and peace to all. Thanks be to God. Leading us this morning as the presider of the fifth Sunday of Easter was Monsignor Larry Bakke, the director of the Apostolate for Persons with Disabilities of the Diocese of Madison and parochial administrator of Our Lady Queen of Peace Parish in Madison. I'm Cheryl Horn of Our Lady Queen of Peace in Madison, and it is an honor to be asked by Monsignor Larry to share in this television mass ministry of the Apostolate. The deaf and hard of hearing of our television faith community were able to share in worship with us thanks to closed captioning provided by the Apostolate and the interpretation of Mary Lynn Rose of St. Dennis Parish in Madison. The ability of the Apostolate to bring this weekly time of sharing in faith, word, and Eucharist for persons of all faiths who may be homebound in healthcare facilities and persons with any kind of disability is made possible by the generosity, public service, and social concern of the owner, management, and staff of WISC TV. Please remember them in your prayers. Until next Sunday morning, may you have a beautiful week. May you always praise the Lord, for he is gracious and merciful. <laughs>